from Colorado and I was skiing powder last weekend. Um, but yeah, anyways, my name is my name is Kendra. I'm with 3D Hubs. This is our launch event. So first of all, thank you everybody for coming. Uh, I've been flying all over the country uh, hosting these launch events, so it's really interesting for me uh, to meet the 3D printing community in Chicago. Um, so at 3D Hubs, we believe that 3D printing is revolution, and I know it's pretty hyped. Um, the technology is not where it needs to be at in terms of the scalability, but we believe that this is going to happen with products. Um, so basically with 3D printing, for the first time in history, products can be produced locally, they can be produced on demand, and like Mike was saying, they can be fully customized. <coughs> um, similar to what you saw happen with digitization with, with music and books, we think that this is going to happen with products. So previously, if you wanted to buy a CD, you'd go to a store, you'd buy a CD. If you wanted to buy a book, you'd go to a bookstore and you'd buy a book. Uh, the same thing happens with products now. Uh, but we believe that in the future, there are products that you will be able to download online and print. For example, I'm, my background, I'm an architectural engineer, so something I'm kind of interested in right now. I've got some side projects where I'm looking into uh, furniture that you can do this with. Um, so there's a lot of supply chain problems, right? There's a lot of players involved. There's a lot of steps. Uh, and what we think is going to happen in the future is that we think, like I said before, 3D printing is going to be able to cut out a lot of these steps uh, for a lot of different types of products. I, I'm sure a lot of people in this room, and like I said, it's very hypey, but I'm sure a lot of people in this room have heard uh, The Economist calling 3D printing the third industrial revolution. Um, and like I said before, it's because for the first time in history, uh, products can be produced from the bottom up versus the top down. Uh, to give you guys a little bit of background of behind our company, so this is how we started. We were founded by two guys in Amsterdam. I'm obviously not one of them. Um, they have about 10 years of experience with 3D printing leaders. Uh, and they basically were getting together after work and they started running some numbers and they realized that there are over 150,000 3D printers in the world running at about 95% idle capacity, which represents a huge opportunity. And so now I'm going to go into basically um, the current story of 3D Hubs. This is how we started. And give you guys a little bit of background how I got involved. I'm actually an architectural engineer, uh, formally trained and informally trained computer scientist. I was working as a construction project manager in Manhattan. And uh, I was sort of unhappy in my career. It was processing a lot of documentation. If any of you ever worked in the construction industry. And uh, I heard Skylar Tibbetts, who is a researcher at MIT, speak on self-assembly and has the same background as me. And I was very inspired, and uh, it resonated with me, and so I basically joined 3D Hubs uh, about six months ago. Um, so to give you guys an idea of where we're at now, we have 3,400 printers worldwide. We have 12 print hubs in Chicago, which I'm a little bit disappointed by this number because uh, the 3D printing community here is actually pretty strong, so hopefully after this event, if you guys know anybody who has a printer who would like to uh, amortize or monetize on their initial investment in their machine, please let me know. Uh, this is just an example of what our platform looks like. It's super easy. Um, if you own a printer, you just click the own a printer button. Um, if you want to upload a model, you just click on the upload a model button. button. And essentially how the system works is you upload your file, uh, you choose a geography, you can then uh, scan through all the 3D hubs in your area and you can filter based on materials, resolution, and other sorts of things. Um, so for all the data nerds, one of the cool things, and actually, you know, like I'm not a data nerd by training, but one of the cool things about having a, an international network of 3D printers is we get to see in real time what people are printing worldwide. Um, so if you guys ever want to follow the trends that, I mean, this is something that we've also recognized as a huge opportunity with our company is this data. Um, so if you guys are interested, it's 3dhubs.com slash trends, and you can see what people are making uh, worldwide. So you can see that the market is pretty much dominated currently by prototype, prototyping and uh, hobbyists, um, as well as we have, you know, arts and, and fashionistas, uh, household uh, people make household objects, gadgets like drones and those sorts of things. Uh, this is like what I really like to present on. Is like I said, it's really cool to see, especially for me because I was coming into this industry uh, with no previous experience in it. So it's pretty cool to see worldwide what people are printing. 
Um, this was actually the very first order that was ever placed on our platform. So the gentleman on the left, he wanted to customize a uh, GoPro accessory. Uh, he couldn't find what he was looking for online, so he found 3D hubs. And the little boy on the right is his print hub. <laughs> <laughs> 